what's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know what it is. This is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. The podcast is playing Young Rock and Metal fans discover new music, help find players they connect and feel accepted. Welcome to the show. And this is a one I'm I'm super excited about because when I say, you know, find bands that you can connect with, you know, new bands that you connect with. I remember first finding out about this band literally right at the beginning of the pandemic. Watching them grow over the last three years has been absolutely insane. And they, they become one of my favorite bands, one of my top 10 favorite bands of all time. And yeah, I've got their shirt on right now. It's from Ashes to New, and Maddie the Drummer is here with us today. Right before the release, they're brand new on Blackout. And oh boy, you're going to want to check out this one because it just shows how great of a band from Ashes to New truly, truly is. Before we jump in, though, I want to thank support for this podcast, which comes from Phoenix Fitness. So yes, you guys know my one of my favorite things to do outside of podcasting is, of course, going to concerts, going to live shows, and getting those mosh pits. Yes, I've seen from Ashes to New, I think, six times already in the past, like, two and a half, three, two years. Yeah, two years. So you guys know I love going and doing this stuff, and you guys have heard the term mosh pit fit because that's what I like to say. So what is that? I want to make sure that I'm able to go from the beginning of the set of the first band to the end of the set of the headliner in the mosh pit, no breaks in between. I got to make sure I'm strong enough to be able to deliver some of those hits because I don't want to be weak, but I got to make sure I'm strong enough to not get knocked over all the time by some of the big dudes in the pit. So that's why I go to the gym consistently, work out a lot, lift a lot of weights, do a lot of cardio. Also, it's a great mental health thing, but it's also make sure I am mosh pit fit and hang on my fitness goals. And of course, I know you want to hit on your fitness goals too, but you also make sure you're preparing and recovering right to get on those fitness goals and achieve them. And that's where Phoenix Fitness comes in with different types of supplements to help you achieve those fitness goals, such as different types of pre-workouts, both stim and stim free, different types of BCW recovery compounds, post-workout, different types of creatine to build muscle, different types of protein blends, whey based, collagen based, plant based, different types of multivitamins, literally anything you might need to achieve your fitness goals, Phoenix Fitness has for you. So our listeners and viewers and you can get 20% off using the code CP. P20 at fnxfit.com. Link description of the podcast. Thank you, Phoenix Fitness. Now, time for a feature presentation. Maddie, the drummer from Ashes to New, is with us today. You guys ready for this one? This one's an absolute blast. And Maddie, oh my dear God, he gave us a great episode. So let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, if you have been under a rock the past three years, that's the only way you're going to miss the fact that this band has risen from a band that you might not have known to. Now they're going on tours, and I mean, they're playing in front of tens of thousands of people. They opened for Shine Down this year. Right now, as we're speaking, they're opening for Motionless and White and In This Moment. I've seen them open for both my Valentine, Memphis May Fire. I've seen them headline their own tour with The Word Alive. It has been absolutely fantastic. Following these guys, they've got a brand new album called Blackout coming out on Friday, July 28th. And what better way to get you guys ready for that album and ready for more great music from these guys by talking with them. So please welcome Maddie from the band from Ashes to New to the podcast. So Maddie, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. Going on. Pleasure to be here. I'm stoked. Pleasure to have you on, man. How has life been going for you? Because you guys have been just cranking out as much as possible this year from new music, tours left and right. You guys have been going nuts. So how's life been treating you? It's been great. I mean, ever since, you know, pandemic lifted and touring can come back, that was like, you know, the biggest thing for us was just, this is what we love to do. This is what we do. You know, this is who we are as people. So not having that for a long time really put things into perspective of how much you cherish this and you and you love it. So getting back to it and being able to be back on tour, seeing all of our friends play shows, see the fans, you know, interact with everybody again. It's like it's it's making us who we are again. You know, we lost a little piece of that. I think everybody kind of lost a little bit of themselves during the pandemic. And uh, it just feels great to be back. And we're stoked to see this growth that's happening and everybody just starting to come behind it and, and really be a part of it. And we love that. I mean, you guys really built up a lot of that even before the pandemic, but I do remember when the pandemic hit because you guys were doing the like the cover songs and then when Panic came out, it was just like, for me, that was just the one song I'm like, oh my God, where have these guys been? How have I not noticed these guys yet? But whatever just happened, I just became a fan of them in that moment. And then from yeah. there to see you guys go from, because I believe before the pandemic hit, I did have a ticket to go see you guys play live because you're opening for Bad Wolves and Hollywood Undead, which would have been awesome. But oh, yeah, that tour was going to be sick. We were all so stoked for that one. But then I was like, oh, damn, when am I going to get to, when am I gonna get to see him? I think I saw you guys at Blue Ridge 2021 for the first time. And then I knew I had to come and see you guys play live. You did a run at the beginning of 2022. It was like you guys, 
Fire from the Gods, Blind Channel, King Collapse, and Above Snakes. And I'm just like, okay, there's no way I'm missing this. And I haven't yeah. seen you guys ever since, every chance I get, because when it comes to seeing you guys play live, you guys just put on one hell of a show where I don't want to miss any second of it. Thank you. Hey, we appreciate it. We try to, uh, you know, leave it all out on there, mm -hmm. on the stage, and and we really invest into, like, you know, lately it's been a lot of our production and things like that. How do we step it up? Every tour, we have to do something different. We can't keep the same thing. Um, you know, there might be some songs that are similar. Obviously, we have to play certain songs that the fans want to hear for the set list, but we at least try to change those up all the time and just be as interactive as possible. We just go off. That's where we lose our minds and we get to let out any frustrations or just joy, you know, happiness, whatever. We just get to embellish while we're on stage. And that's, you know, it, I'm glad that it transpires over to you guys and, and you get to see it and you, you're locked in as much as we are. I'm, I know it absolutely transpires because when I first got to you guys, especially like I'm going to go back to the headline run you guys did at the beginning of 2022. It was in some smaller venues, so the production wasn't as grand just based on the size, based on what was going on. But then as time has gone on, every time I've seen you guys since, the production has gotten bigger. It's gotten grander. And of course, the stages you guys are playing on have gotten bigger and grander as well. Because I've seen you guys play in front of like 200, 250 people. To the last time I saw you guys play, it was like a sold out show in Milwaukee opening up for bullet for my Valentine, which was over 3000 plus. And I know you guys even played a month earlier opening for shine down, which was, you know, in yeah. the tens of thousands right there. So seeing we the that area so many times, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. I, I'm not complaining. Cause I get to see you guys like more often than not. And it's just absolutely awesome. It's like, keep it coming, keep it going. Yep. Yep. That's a good area. I mean, we love coming through there. I'm somehow worked out to where, you know, radius clauses and things like that weren't played into effect, but yeah, we were able to go through, <laughs> I think on our own thing, you know, mm -hmm. prior, a little prior on our headline stuff and then shine down and then bullet. And then we did something else like right after it was just like, okay, but it's a good area. We love going through there. It, everybody's always uh rowdy. So we like it. Yeah. Just keep coming through it. Cause every time you guys are going to be in the area, if I'm at a show, I'm going to make sure that crowd is freaking rowdy. Cause once, once I hear something, once I hear any opening, it's like, okay, open this pit up. Let's go have some fucking fun. Oh yeah. Yep. And that's what it's about. <laughs> And I'm again, it's just amazing seeing the trajectory you guys have been on from a growth standpoint. And it's got to be somewhere over the last couple of years, even with everything that's been going on with you guys, all the touring, all the new music. Have you taken a chance to like step back and just see how much this thing has grown over the past couple of years, basically since the pandemic hit? Yeah, I think that all of us, we all come from very... Um, I, I guess you could call it poor backgrounds. You know, we weren't always the ones that had everything you know so to get to a point of where we're at now we always try to reflect we try to be as grateful as possible there's a lot of times i'll tell everybody you know the guys as well i might be the last one up sometimes i'm sitting on a bus and you can kind of see behind me we're in an older one this tour we're in an old 96 but honestly like we make the most out of everything you know and um we're grateful for whatever we can have and we're super grateful and just appreciative of everything i'll sit back and i'll just reflect you know like we got our friends out here who are employees and um, able to work for us and have a crew, you know, we're able to travel down the road in a bus and be on these big tours. And it's just like to take that for granted is, is insane to us. Um, and it's just, like I said, where we came from as kids, you know, we dreamed of this, you know, we manifested this and we didn't have a lot when we were growing up. None of us did. And um, so this is something for us that we, we pride ourselves in and it makes us humbled uh, but it also makes us hungry at the same time. We want to keep going for more and more, but we appreciate and we take time to reflect on everything that's happened, especially after the pandemic stuff. You know, that was a situation where nobody knew what was going to happen. It, was this going to continuously be a thing? Were we losing everything that we've worked our entire lives for? So coming back into this really makes you appreciate it just a little bit more and almost forces you to reflect a little bit and go, OK, you know, like when you could complain about something like when we first came into the bus, we were like, Oh man, what is this? Cause we've been spoiled a little bit with, you know, our blessings that we've been able to have within where we've gotten in our career. But like I said, we make the most out of everything. And, and it's not about, you know, what we're in or anything like that at this point, it's just about, you know, being grateful for what we have. So, yeah, I mean, we, we take a step back all the time and look at it and go, damn, this is awesome. Like just to be where we're at and you know, seeing it still growing, and knowing that it's going to keep growing, like Friday, we put out a new record and it's our best piece of work that we've done yet. So it's, we're super stoked. We're excited and just honestly very grateful for everything.
I'll say to say that's your best piece of work you guys got coming out yet. I want to emphasize yet because, I mean, this is only the fourth album that's come out from From Ash to New. There's plenty of more music still to come down. Who knows if this is going to be the best one ever, but best one yet is one hell of a way to put it. And I kind of got to agree with you just from the single so far because I remember first hearing Nightmare. I'm like, did I just find a new From Ash, favorite From Ash to New song? I think I did. Oh, yeah. And this is that Hate Me Too comes out, Armageddon comes out. I'm like, just keep this coming. Just keep this rolling. Yeah. But the one thing you said that really stood out to me was – when it comes taking a look back and like reflecting on it, you're able to reflect on where you guys had come from, where you guys had been, you know, growing up, wanting this, and then getting to this point now where you're able to look at how far you've gone. So you're able to appreciate that and stay humble throughout this whole entire thing, but then still remember all of that and what it felt like and still put it into your daily lives today to want to keep growing, to want to keep going, because it's that tenacity, that drive is the thing that keeps bands growing and keeps bands getting you know having larger influence bringing more people shows connecting with more people and creating this larger community as a whole that's going to come out see you guys perform support you guys and just be positively impacted by your music and i the more i see you guys connect with people online the more i see you guys continually connect with people in concert you know i've run into Matt and uh, Danny when I was walking to the rave in November because they're just standing outside. I just was walking. I was the only one there. I was like, yep. oh my God, hey guys. And they yep. talked to me for like two minutes or something. Then they went back to the bus. I'm like, well, they didn't have to do that. But how cool was that? That kind of tenacity to keep growing, even with the smallest little bits, is one of the reasons why whenever I talked about for Mashinu to people, there's nothing but positivity that comes from their mouths right. in response. We love that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like we're all human beings, right? You know, we're all here trying to enjoy something together. And just because we're on different sides of the stage doesn't make us any different as human beings. You know, we all go through struggles and we all go through the same things. And sometimes we have that voice to be able to let out to you guys and it helps us as well. Um, so we're not ever people that are going to be like, oh, we're in this position, so we can't do these things. If it wasn't for the fans, if it wasn't for everybody who supported us, we wouldn't be where we are. So for us to forget that is kind of, uh, if I can say that bullshit, you know, I don't mm -hmm. like that sort of mentality that comes behind that. None of us do. Um, we're people that really, we pride uh, everybody who's behind us. And we know that we, this is one big family. You know, every fan of ours is a family to us because like I said, we couldn't be here if it wasn't for everybody else supporting, coming to the shows, buying the merch, spreading the name, everything. That's what helps us keep growing. So we give back. And when you see bands do that in the scene, when it comes to them thinking about that, having the minds behind that, and then genuinely doing that every single day, those are the bands that people constantly look at as positive inspirations through their music, through their actions, and just any interaction they have with them. And the bands I always think about when I think about that are Seven Dust and Papa Roach, because every time I hear about those bands, they embody that. Seeing you guys perform live, seeing you guys connect with the fans, how you do it online and in person, you do it day in and day out, the mentality and the connection is there for me between you guys, how Seven Dust operates, how Papa Roach operates. So the connection is there, and that's one of the main reasons why I think as time continues to go on, for Mash News, just going to keep growing and growing even more, not only with the fans, but amongst the music scene as a whole as well, where people are going to want to be opening for you and people are going to want to have you open for them on, you know, those stadium tours like Shinedown did. Yep. And honestly, a lot of those bands that you kind of mentioned, you know, we've been fans of for a long time. Papa Roach, Seven Dust, you know, Shinedown obviously is a big, uh, big influence for all of us. Some of my really good friends, you know, I, I work with them outside of just doing this uh, as well. Zach and Barry and Eric and Brent are just all truly, truly amazing people. And and doing that tour with them was not only a blessing to just see how full circle our careers have come from, to listening to them when we were younger and idolizing what they're able to do and having the number ones that they've had and things like that. And still today be a 20 year plus band, but also feel like they're five years old, every record that they come out with and be on top of the world. Um, but also to see how big that they are and still take time for their fans. There's a line usually somewhere outside by where the buses are and they'll take the time to come outside and sign and stuff and talk with the fans. And, you know, even though the, they're selling out arenas in front of 10,000 people, they still make time. You know, and to see that and see how they treat their crew and see how they treat, you know, Brent will literally go by uh, a person sitting in a chair just guarding the hallway and go up to them and ask them how their day's doing, you know, and do they need anything? Do they need water? Do they need, you know, 
anything to snack on while they sit there all day, you know, because they don't get the opportunities to just up and leave and go do all these extra things. They take the time to treat people as humans because we're all human beings. And it's, it's one of those things. It's like if they're doing it, bands who aren't even to their level who aren't doing that it's like how can you You're like how can you not do that you know how do you forget where you come from how do you forget that we're all human beings and all going through the same thing so it's like that was also very admirable to watch and um you know they mentored us in more ways than they i, I think they even realized so it was it was really cool to see all of that but it just it made us connect with them because that's how we try to be as human beings too And not only connect with them, but it allows you to learn from them as well to see where they are as a band on that stage, how they interact not only with their fans, but just interact with everyone that's around them on a daily basis to create such a positive atmosphere to the point where when you think about going to see Shine Down Live, you think of nothing but, you know, one of the best concerts, one of the best performances you're going to see where your eyes are glued on the stage the entire time. And you're just feeling the positive energy that's going from Brent, from Zach, from the guys over into you you're just absolutely loving every step of the way so as you guys continue to grow you can not only employ that and just really connect with your fans connect with everyone else that you come into contact with but other bands that are coming through the scene as well that are coming up they're gonna be able to take a look at what you guys are doing and be inspired by that on how to connect with people how to treat fans how to treat everyone else that's around them to make sure that their music and their presence is constantly having the positive impact that we want to have going forward every time we talk to anybody absolutely you know it's we don't necessarily try to do it on purpose it's just who you know we are as people um but if we can have that impact behind the scenes that's huge to us as well. You know, obviously we strive to be as vulnerable and real on stage as possible. You know, there's times where we're having hard days, emotional days, and it comes out, you know, on stage. There's been times where I've gotten choked up just playing certain songs. Um, You know, the messages that we speak, Matt and Danny are saying on stage are very vulnerable, very real. We we're trying to let out, you know, it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to just have a moment, you know, it's okay to be not okay. Um, So we're trying to, give that to the fans. But if we can do the same thing behind the scenes and showcase that it's okay to, you know, interact with the people, you know, you don't have to play this like level Mm -hmm. thing. There's no, there's no levels really, you know, we're all just the same. So, you know, we would like that to be able to happen, you know, but we're just going to keep being real. We're just going to keep being us. And hopefully that transpires over to other people and they see it too. And, you know, it connects with them on that level. I definitely think it will. And I do remember even like when you guys are talking about keeping it real and even when you have those hard days, that's okay to not be okay. Sometimes I, I think it was yesterday or maybe two days ago before we record this, Danny was online posting about how, you know, you guys have been on the road for so long and there's some things that he'd been struggling with just because he's been away from his family, been away from his fiance. And that can, I mean, that's understandable when you're away for so long and you're constantly where you're constantly grinding, you're driving towards your dreams. You know, sometimes, you know, you might feel like, you know, you're struggling because you're not connecting with certain people. And that kind of yeah. leads to a question from someone from the Fermat New Group, Elizabeth Bruce asked, when things get hard on the road or even in between tours, what is, what's like the biggest thing that keeps you going and keeps you inspired through those times? Depends on kind of depends on the environment. So it depends on if it's on the road, that could be a different type of mental um, just thing that's happening or a depressive thing that's happening or joyful thing, whatever it is. On the road can be very hard because a lot of times, you know, you're missing loved ones, you're missing your home, you're missing the comfortability of all those things. Trying to, I think for that, at least for myself, I don't have the same situation that Matt does. He has a wife and a kid and a home and dogs and, and a whole family. You know, he's got all that. Um, Danny's getting ready to buy a house and he's engaged, planning on a wedding, trying to balance, you know, all this work, basically, you know, what, I mean, this is work and then Mm. a home life. So I don't have the same things as them. I'm a single person, but I have my own struggles as well. But I see, you know, for us, it's kind of what I said before, trying to reflect on the positives about here, you know, remember how hard we've worked for these things and to be grateful for the moments that we have within these things, because we never know how long they're going to last. You know, COVID was a huge thing that showed us it could happen overnight and it's gone. Um, But to reflect and to try to stay positive as possible, you know, be grateful for every little thing and, and try to manifest what you need to manifest is a big thing. If you're putting out into the universe, what you want, that's what you're going to get. You know, so if you're putting out a lot of negativity and through those hard moments, if you're only focused on the negative, you're going to continuously get negative. I always try to say that there is a positive in every situation. It's just depending on how you want to look at it. 
So there's a lot of times where it's on the road, it does become very hard. But if you sit in that negative, it's going to only become harder for yourself, you know, and it'll become more depressive and dark. And we all go through those moments. And sometimes you just need to isolate or you need to cope however you need to cope, but you can't stay in those things. You have to keep pushing forward. Uh, at home, there's a lot of times where I've gotten very, very dark and depressive moments. Um, I've talked about this in a previous interview that's on my Instagram as well. And just the same thing, realizing that you don't have to be stuck in this and to find sources outside of however you need to um, that are positive for you and benefiting you that to that you're just not stuck in those moments. You know, this is a mind game almost for yourself. At least for me, it is. Everybody's a little different, but I, I'll get caught sometimes and just being like, when I'm not on tour, what's my purpose? You know, and, and like I said, I don't have the same things to go back home to. So a lot of the times where I had a lot of friends around when I was younger and I was touring, I was younger. I was, I was going out on tours and going to Europe and doing all these things and coming back home and I had all my friends. So it's, it felt like, you know, because you're surrounded by 10, 12 people on a bus all the time on the road and all these fans and people are yelling for you and they want to meet you. And it feels like this big party. Right. And then you go home and then you're with your friends and my younger 20s and I'm just hanging out with everybody. Well, as everybody starts to get older, everybody starts to have their own lives. I started coming home and then I just had nothing. Uh, so it was myself. And it became very lonely and very depressing. And um, I think that it took a while for me to realize that I had to dig inside myself and reflect on things and then soul search a little bit and to realize what was truly important for me. What was I trying to just live off of? Was I living off those highs? You know, kind of like an addiction thing. You know, I've been surrounded by addiction my entire life, not myself personally, but throughout my family and things like that. And uh, I think it's taught me a lot about how not to get trapped into the negative mental funk of things and go down that dark path. Um, being very vulnerable with myself, but also very real. You know, there's a lot of moments where it's like, you're pissed off at somebody or something or whatever, but you have to be like, why am I, you know? Cause that'll spiral you. You might be mad because you're not home, you know, dealing with this thing that you should be dealing with and you're out here. So you feel guilty. Okay. Well, you're projecting then maybe potentially something to somebody else. And now you're mad at them, but you're not really mad at them. You're mad at yourself. So you have to reflect you know i just keep coming back to that you have to reflect and, and understand those things a little bit and and be honest with yourself and we all try to be that for each other you know we try to be there for each other as as a family and be like it's okay for you to be in a mood you know but like we're here for you kind of thing um because we all go through it whether it's at home whether it's on tour we have these highs and we have these lows and we're gonna go through them it's roller coasters but as long as we're so real with ourselves and i'm open and honest and vulnerable, have those kind of private talks with yourself. So you sit back and you go, okay, what is wrong with me? Why do I feel this way? What is happening with me? Could this be from this thing? Could this be from this thing? And you could start to compartmentalize those things a little bit and then go through those files, you know, like, let me take this at this time. Let me take this one and, and get the strength back to get back to it. It's at least helped me a lot trying to be very vulnerable with myself. Um, I was taught from a really young age to just be very honest. If I was old enough to ask, I was old enough to know. And I think that uh, having that sort of thing when I was a kid taught me to be very real, you know, um, asking a question and getting the response that you didn't expect because you wanted to be angry, right? Everybody wants to sometimes just be angry and take it mm -hmm. out on somebody. But when somebody hits you with that truth and goes, no, I did this. You're just like, okay. So it taught me to be really real with myself, but also real with my peers. And that I think is a really strong suit. If you can be really real with yourself in those hard moments and just be honest, I know that this isn't how I'm supposed to be right now, but then figure out the why that'll help you the most to get through those things because you're never alone. You have people around you. It's a mental trick to think that you're alone because right now, you know, there's people in the hotel and I'm in the bus or any of these things and I could just isolate all day, but is that going to be healthy for me if I'm in those moments? But I have so many people to lean on. I have fans that I could lean on if I need to. I have friends, you know, it's a game that we play a lot of the times that we think that we're alone, we're dark or we're depressive or any of those things. Um, but there's so much beauty in all of this more than we realize sometimes. And it just takes a little bit of reflection to, you know, admit to ourselves that it's okay. That might be single-handedly one of the most powerful things I've ever heard said on this podcast, because as I was listening, just taking everything in, 
I'm thinking about, you know, you're keeping it real with yourself. And not only that, but just being honest, reflective to see when those bad days are happening, when those trouble, trouble times are happening, where you might be losing motivation, might be losing drive, being able to reflect on just like what's going good in your life and just be able to bring back that positivity and not stay in those dark spaces. That's something I have been thinking about myself where, wait, I've been kind of stuck doing that myself as well. Certain things haven't been going very well, so I've been kind of drawn back a little bit. But if I look back and reflect on, you know, the podcast and everything, I'm like, wait a minute, I've gotten to talk to a couple of my favorite artists of all time just in the past month. I'm literally doing it right now. It's like, what? You know, there's stuff like this that I should be taking a step back and thinking, even when life is not going so well, there's certain things in life that are consistently going well. And if I need to lean on those positives for the moment, just to keep going. Yeah, we can lean on those pods. We can lean on the people that are creating those pods relationships alongside us to really continue on to go forward and to find that motivation once again, because we are going to go through those troubled times and we might need something or someone to help us through that. And there's gonna be people in our lives or things in our lives that are going to be able to help us through that. And when those people need help, we can respond in kind as well and create this positive cycle consistently going to the point where even with you guys, when you're on the road, if people are struggling, if people are having those bad days, you're able to be there, reflect with each other and help each other out to bring back that positivity, bring back that motivation, bring back that drive, because maybe the thing that you're really stressing out about is something you can't really deal with right now or something that's not going to, you can't really impact right now. Maybe you can impact it in a couple of weeks, but you can't impact it right now. So worry about what you can control and maybe not what you can't control at the same time. And you'd be proud of where you've come from. You know, I think that a lot of people put so much anxiety and stress on themselves about, you know, I need to do this. And I need to do this. and I need to do this. It's like, okay, well, okay, let's start with what's the end goal, you know, or where do you want to be? You know, what are you trying to accomplish now? Let's break this down and let's just start trying to achieve little by little. And then be like, okay, I got that. And then you feel proud of yourself. You did that. Okay. And, and a lot of times for us to kind of go back into it a little bit, Little things like when I notice I'm not hitting the gym a lot or if I'm not trying to work on my craft enough, I start to get anxiety of myself like, oh, I'm, I'm going on stage and I don't feel like I'm good enough. There's a lot of times I'm a high functioning anxiety person. I've started to realize, you know, when I didn't think as much, I just did things and I was way more happy within myself. I'm so hypercritical and overanalyzing every little thing that I do anymore that I'm putting so much strain and stress on myself that one small little minute mistake and it's just this big thing to me and I have to find ways to kind of overcome those things. So if it's for me, I want to be a better drummer. How do I become that? Now let's break that down. You know, if it's the top of the pyramid is I want to be the best of the best, then how do we become that? Okay, let's practice more. But practice comes in. How do I make that fun? How do I make that, you know, because I'm in a funk, right? So I'm trying to get out of that funk to feel happy within those things again. Um, For a lot of us, it's going to the gym. You know, the gym helps us to feel more proactive. And when I go to the gym in the morning, my diet starts to get better. My diet's better. Now my mental, my emotional is feeling better. You know, because now I'm doing things that are helping me feel better. And now I feel like I want to go and set up the practice kit on a day off and go play drums instead of go do something else and forget my priorities that I have to do because it's easier to put them off. But it's really not because then it just becomes a pile up and then you're more stressed about the pile up. So there's a lot of little different things, you know, but yeah, we just try to uh, try to be as real with ourselves as possible. And there's moments where we don't want to be and it takes a minute and you know, patience is a big thing, but also just being, like you said, taking time to focus on what you can focus on and realizing that, okay, I can't do everything all at once. So let me do what I can right now, but also be super proud of how far I've come because, you know, like yourself, you said that you wanted to start the podcast. You not only started it, but you're doing it. You're interviewing people that you go out to see their shows, you know, things like that. So it's like, take that time to be proud of yourself. Us. I remember Danny's first bus tour and him talking about how he had on a vision board, just him walking onto a bus and he never stepped foot on a bus until it was our bus that he was going on tour with. And that was a very special moment with something that, you know, going into this bus, you know, you can see behind me, it's not the most like upscale thing. Right. But to still be like, look at how far I've come. I'm now at a point that I can be upset about what type of bus we're going on rather than just wishing I could even be on one. You know what I mean? So it's kind of taking that and go, okay, yeah, things aren't as bad as I thought that they were, you know? So it's just taking that realistic moment and just being real with yourself and like, be proud, you know, be proud of how far we can complain about certain things. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I was saying, even for everyone else that's listening to that, you know, we're not going to be in the same position that you guys are, but we can take a look at that and imply it to our own lives as well. Like myself with the podcast, like someone else with your, with your job or family, whatever it might be. There are certain positives you can focus on. There are certain negatives that you don't have to focus on. There are certain things that, you know, when you're doing something, it's going to be tougher at times to not let a lot of those negative thoughts potentially come in your head because you might be overthinking certain things. Anxiety might be getting you, but try and find a ways to put into practice, to reflect, to see how far you've come to see the positive in there. But at the same time, see what you can impact now, because even when I'm at the gym, even when I still have to go to my full-time job, there's times where it's like, okay, why am I getting a little bit more stressed out? Even when I'm working out due to the fact that, well, I'm thinking about work. I can't impact work right now. I can't impact the podcast right now. The thing I can impact is whatever's on the squat rack right now. So let's go do that. Let's focus in on that and try and take care of that. And I do want to jump back into one other thing you were bringing up when you were going through reflecting when you're talking about, you know, going over to Europe and and touring overseas, coming back home. And then you had a lot of friends that were still around here. So the party was always going, but as time has gone on, you know, Loneliness kind of has can set in at times because those friends aren't there. During the time when you were constantly traveling Europe, was that your time when you were uh, touring with Trivium? I'm leading to a question here. Trust me on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I um, sorry, I was a, a little distracted. I had to text real quick. Uh, some people rode up on the bus and started screaming for some reason. So hopefully that doesn't come through. So I had to be like, "Yo, shut up." Um, can you go back to that last little part of the yeah. question? But yes, I yeah. you yeah. do the. Tri- yeah, basically so because there was a question that I was going to allude to with that from uh, Sabrina Jessica from the Fanatics New from Ashton New fan group saying, "How did you initially get connected with From Ashes to New, and what was the transition like going from Trivium to From Ashes to New?" So I'll start with the connection for From Ashes to New. Um, so I saw a post from a producer that we've worked with now multiple times, Grant McFarland. So I knew of his old band. He used to be in a band called This Is the Apocalypse. It was a Lancaster-based band. Kind of grew up with. Um, August Burns, Red, Texas mm-hmm. in July, this is the apocalypse. So I used to go to a lot of those shows. So I'm from the Chester County, Pennsylvania area. So I grew up close to where the band's based out of in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. But Matt and I never met before. We've been in multiple shows or, or just events around the areas together. We never really crossed paths. At that time, I wasn't really able to do music. Um, I was trying to put some bands together and things like that, but I would go out to shows and I was very inspired by all of it. Um, but just in my area, I just didn't have the connections and I wasn't able to really drive or anything like that. And I knew the Lancaster scene was more booming, but I wasn't able to get down there. So I focused on this whole world that was going on in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area and the tri-state region of music. And I became friends with Grant, went to a bunch of their shows, talked to him a bunch, you know, we're Facebook friends. So 2016, early 2016, I see a post that he says, internationally touring band, you know, looking for a fill-in drummer for a CD release tour, you know, hit me up with details, send videos, whatever. This was right after I got out of Trivium. I was done with Trivium in 2015, the end of 2015. I missed one show. So I basically considered 2016 is when I started, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, departure process whatever was going on and um i saw this post and i hit him up and i said hey man you know i'm available um if it's for somebody in this area where is it at he's it's lancaster pennsylvania based i was like cool i live 45 minutes away i'm east you know i'm closer to philly than lancaster and uh i was like i played in trivium because we didn't really keep in touch like that but i was like i have played in trivium you know i'm sure there's youtube videos i just don't have personalized videos um, I felt like the name itself kind of like represented, mm-hmm. you know, because I knew that this this band, it was for From Ashes, wasn't at the level yet of where Trivium was. So I wasn't, you know, fe- feeling like that name itself was like, OK, he's in a, the runnings for it. So he's like, send me these videos, you know, send me all this stuff. And I was like, well, I don't have any. But I was like, it was Trivium. You know, it was, it was some fast double bass stuff. It was, you know, some pretty big metal stuff I played in some pretty big shows, but I was like, let me find something online. There's got to be fan views or whatever it was. And at the time, the drummer who was in the band was actually a really, really big Trivium fan. So he had already knew who I was and he knew my work. So as soon as he was like, Hey, this guy hit me up. He used to play in Trivium. He went, he's down to do it. Lives 45 minutes away. They're like, yeah, absolutely. Let's go. So I didn't have to send any of the videos in or anything like that. Um, it was convenient, you know, 45 minutes away. I just drove the kit across and went and practiced. And I learned the songs maybe in like a week or something like that, which it wasn't really, 
you know, anything crazy. Um, and I started rehearsals with them pretty much right away. And then we went out on that CD release tour. So then I could tell that there were some differences. Matt's obviously the founder of the band. Lance has been in it since pretty much after the first tour. And I could tell that there were some tensions going on. And I said, hey, look, you know, I could tell that something's weird between the drummer, the old singer. They're feeling some type of ways about this. They're not really invested. You know, they didn't want to ever go out and do the post-show merch stuff. They just, it was like, why do we got to do this? You know, it was just a lot of things that they were taking for granted, you know, what got them there in the first place, that love that they had. And um, I could tell something was weird. And I could tell that it was, you know, pissing some people off who are actually putting in a lot of work for this, you know, dedication and care about this thing. Matt, Lance. Um, so it's like, I told those guys, I said, you know, if things change. You let me know. I'm going to go back to teching. Uh, but I like this. I like this vibe. This is very much my cup of tea. You know, I, I think that we, you guys are onto something. All of us coming together could really step this thing up. And uh, yeah, so I think October, it was like October of 2016, I was back to teching and they hit me up and they're like, hey, you still looking for a drumming spot? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be down as long as the offer is right. And I wasn't really trying to go too far below where I was at. I was kind of being stubborn a little bit, but I told them, I was like, for you guys, I was like, I'd be down if it ever happened. And I was like, who's it for? And they're like, it's for us. And I was like, cool, count me in, I'm down. So I gave up the whole teching thing for a while. I went right back in 2017. We started um, working on the new record, the future record, which is what now we consider our first record of for Matches to New. I know that there's EPs and there's day one and things like that, but we feel like this lineup is the lineup that I was always supposed to be. So we're saying that we're about to be on our third record rather than our fourth record, you know, cause this is the lineup it always should have been. So we started working on the future record and, uh, yeah, you know, so I was literally from a Facebook thing. And it's crazy because Matt actually, I think, reached out to me, whether it was Facebook or Twitter, he ran everything. So he would send like, hey, check out this band. And I believe it was when he was starting it in 2014 and he put my fight together and he was like, check out this song. And it may have been 2013, the very end of 2013. And it was like very early on of everything just one song and he's reaching out and i remember being on tour and seeing this and seeing this person from lancaster pennsylvania and be like okay cool it's you know just another guy trying to hit me up because i'm from the same area mm -hmm. doing something and then i had all these people reaching out to me like hey man can you promote my stuff can you do this can you get me in touch with these people and i just kind of wrote it off and i was like yeah whatever i like never listened to it and then i the first time i heard it i realized when i basically was auditioning or, or helping fill in uh, that I was like, huh, we actually could have crossed paths and never did. And I actually should have heard this song way before. And so it was a joke for a while that Matt used to make fun of me. He's like, dude, he's like, you, you messed up. He's like, you could have just been the original drummer all along. He's like, but you just decided not to answer me. And then it was funny because uh, Danny also did the same thing to Matt and I. You know, when we found him off of YouTube, we reached out, Matt reached out to him personally. and was like, Hey man, I want to talk to you about some music stuff. And he was just like, yeah, whatever. You know, he was kind of like fed up with his old band stuff that was going on. He was frustrated. And we had to reach out to a mutual friend uh, that Matt had and be like, Hey, can you tell him like, we're trying to actually get a hold of him about something serious. And, uh, he was just like, oh, shit. So he like came back and was like, yo, my bad. Like I had no idea. So then we finally got in touch. So Matt, I did it to Matt and then Danny did it to Matt as well. We we're both like, yeah, whatever, dude. Um, but for the trivium stuff, the departure, I don't think that it was necessarily hard going from that into from ashes when it all happened. The time in between was kind of hell for me. Um, mentally. I was 22 when I started playing for trivium. I was 20 when I started touring. So my first tour ever, I was with IC stars. I was a drum tech and I just did it. I paid, everything myself second tour same thing i maybe got buyouts which was like ten dollars a day so i used my own bank account to get on tours because i believed in myself enough to go you know what? i'm going to make something of myself in this industry and the second tour is when i met trivium they basically said hey this kid is just out here working and working and working just doesn't stop he's making no money why don't we take him you know we're losing our drum tech we don't really have to pay him that much and we can bring him in you know and slowly as he increases you know his status in the you know, his spot, then we can continuously pay him more for what he's deserved. So I was like, sure. You know, I, I went from sleeping on a couch and paying my way to making money and sleeping in a bus and getting my flights paid for. I was like, yes, I'm down. Um, so 
I went from them to As I Dying and back to Trivium because we all know what happened with the As I Dying situation, mm -hmm. uh, where most of us do. So I went back to Trivium. And then shortly after is when they let go of Nick and I was the drum tech. So after Carolina Rebellion, some stuff went down. Um, we had a day off in Pittsburgh. They fired Nick in Pittsburgh around four o'clock in the afternoon. I get a call. Hey, come to the tour manager's office or well, hotel room. The whole band's in there. I open the door and they're all just staring at me. And I'm just like, I know I didn't do anything wrong. But initially you're like, why am I in the principal's office? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but then in the back of my mind, I knew what happened the night before. And my intuition was like, are they about to ask me to like help fill in? But I was like, there's no way. And uh, they asked me, they're like, can, how soon can you learn the set? I was like, maybe give me a day. And they're like, well, we need you to play tomorrow. So uh, I hopped in, played the show, did that. And then that's when I was with them for a little while. Basically did two years. I did a the Silence and Snow record with them. Mm -hmm. And then um, we could just tell, you know, they could tell that that wasn't really my style. That wasn't my thing. Uh, I was not going to be the right drummer for them. Um, and I don't think that that style of music was going to be the right thing for me ultimately. So I think that a little bit, you know, I talked about this on the X-Men podcast with Doc Coyle, uh, that I think I kind of checked myself out a little bit. I went and said to myself, I'm going to use this to either make my own band that I love or dream of, or we're going to end up playing stadiums and I'm just going to be happy because we're at this big level, you know, materialistic more than true happiness. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, obviously true happiness is always going to be better than materialistic items. And, you know, we weren't playing stadiums. So I checked myself out and, uh, it showed and, you know, they let me go. There's some other things that I don't agree with, you know, and they kind of rubbed me the wrong way with how it all went down at the end. Um, but you know what, I'm in a much better spot now. This is way better for me and this is home. So yeah, when they let me go. Uh, I was back home and I got a phone call and it was just happened off on a phone call. I, I will say this. I think that they should have done it in person at the last show when management was there and everything else, they could have definitely, you know, stepped up to the plate and be like, Hey, thank you for everything. We're just going to part ways. I would have respected that a lot more than waiting for me to get done a vacation with Pierce the veil guys and Asley dying guys and all that in West Palm beach or was it, uh, yeah, West Palm, it was somewhere in California. Did a boys trip and I got the phone call. I would have disrespected that a little bit more man to man. But uh, it definitely messed with me. You know, I'm sitting at home and I knew that something was wrong by the way that the email came in. We need to have a conference call at this time. And my gut was like, you're getting fired. So I was like, cool. So I took the call. You know, some things were said on there that I was like, mm, that's not cool. But, you know, whatever it is, what it is. And I was just like, I was distraught for a little while. You know, my whole career was basically based off of them. I was 22 when I started with them, or I'm sorry, I was 20 when I started with them, 22 when I started playing with them. And by the time I was done, I was 24, about to be 25, or maybe I just turned 25. I can't remember. And I was just like, where am I going to go? You know, like I was teching prior. I don't know what I'm going to have after this. I don't have a lot of connections. Can't go back to Asley Dying because they're not doing much. I, sh I, guessing I could ask other friends, but everybody kind of had their slots. Um, <clears throat> and playing wise, I was like, I finally did it. You know, I'm like, cool. And then I was like, where am I going to go to? Like, I have this thing behind me, but I didn't really have a reputation yet. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. have anything. So it was young mind and just kind of frantic. And then I think that everything happens for a reason. And I was supposed to see that post and I was supposed to not fully be in Trivium forever and for them too like who they have now what they're doing they're better than the, they've probably ever been you know and that that vibe that I've seen from afar is is great I've, I've talked to all of them since you know it um we used to be called Rock on the Range Sonic mm -hmm. Temple now and I went up to Matt I've hugged him I've hung out with Corey and talked to him at festivals that we've had together you know so it's like we've we just realized like they're on their lane and I'm on mine and then this is what was meant to be but yeah you know, I went through that moment where I was stressed. I was like, what am I going to do with myself? Did I just lose everything I've worked for because of, you know, not being fully in the right spot, at the right time kind of thing. And but it all came around. I saw that post and joined from ashes shortly after. And this is where I was supposed to be. That's just an incredible story. All right. And again, it goes back to just reflecting on the positive and just seeing, you know, where things had gone in life from the point where all of a sudden you were trivium. Now you're no longer trivium where you are in your life, just being frank about that, just getting lost in that, not necessarily sure where to go. But in the end, it all ended up working out for the best because 
Take a look at where you are at now. Take a look at where you are in your career. Take a look at where your happy happiness level is. That is the key to all of this. Your happiness level is at this point where it is like, it's almost unshakable at this point. Of course, we've already talked about there's times where you know those lows can, can come in. But when those lows come in, you're able to lean on, you know, the things that bring positive in your life. Be able to talk with, with Danny, with Matt, with Lance, be able to connect with those guys. Just be able to create more positivity off of it. And just create something to where every time, I mean, hell, anytime people think of from Ashes to New, we're just thinking of a positive experience outright. And of course, when Blackout comes out on Friday, I mean, people are going to be listening to it. They're already getting the positive vibes from it, whether it's from more of that positive driven feel with more tenacity, more just passion, more drive, or even some of the fun stuff as well, whatever it might be. Everyone's connecting with that on such a positive note where when it comes out, honestly, I can't wait to listen to the whole entire thing the whole entire day. It's going to be trouble competing with Seven Dust New Record at the same time. I got to balance both out, but yeah. it's going to be They're fun. Coming listen- out with the new one on the same day too, right? Yeah, it's going to be fun listening to both at the same time. It's like Seven Dust from Master New. Oh my God, I'm going to be in music heaven on Friday. Hey, I know, I mean, it's a totally different thing too, but I heard that like Post Malone was dropping his new record too. And I was like, man, it's a day for music. <laughs> like there's multiple different artists dropping new music and stuff. And we're so, uh, so stoked though. Like we've, we've been done with this record since what, 2021, the end of 2021. Um, so we've been trying to put this out for a long time and we've had a lot of holdbacks and stuff like that and telling us, oh no, we can't do it because of this or, oh, we have to do it because we have to have this tour. And then we got the tour and then it was like, oh, well, we weren't ready for it. And it's just like, come on now. We're trying to give the fans what we want, you know, what they want. And uh, we've been holding on to this music for a while and it is very true to us and what we've been going through. And I think that it's going to relate to a lot of people. And we're very, very stoked that it is finally, finally coming out um, because there's some of our favorite, like I said, pieces of work, but some of my favorite songs I've ever been a part of that are on this. And uh, I'm, I'm very stoked for this record for sure. It's, it's a, you know, from what you've already heard from the singles, hate me too, to nightmare, very different styles, but both just still very fun, very cool, very interactive. And you're going to get a lot of that throughout the whole entire record. Um, we're kind of going back to our roots, but also progressing at the same time. So it's really, really cool to see that, that, that dynamic that's on one record. You know, we're trying to spice it up a little bit, but yeah, like I said, it's been done for like two years now and I can't wait for Friday. It almost doesn't feel real. Like we've been waiting for this for so long that I'm just like, yeah, our new record comes out Friday. And I'm like, Wait, our new record comes out Friday. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, this is crazy. So it'll be sick. I'm gonna say everything from this conversation now, hearing about, you know, you see here hate me too, here nightmare, and you guys are gonna be fully in between. It's like you're trying to find the perfect balance. That's kind of the best way to describe from Ash Sanu, the finding the perfect balance in everything. And I mean, from where you guys had started out to where you guys are now, it's like you guys have that balance. You guys have the absolute perfect, like there's no tilt going this way. No, you guys know exactly yeah. where to be, know exactly how to create these things, know exactly how to create these interactions, create this positivity going forward. And now Friday is going to hit and it's just going to keep happening once again. And I know you got to get going. So Maddie, one thing I'd like to do at the end of these podcasts is give you a chance. Say whatever you want to say, plug or in a plug, or promote at the end of the podcast. So my friend, the floor is yours. Hey, uh, like we just been saying this last couple minutes, just, you know, the new record is out blackout. Uh, it is out this Friday, July 28th. So please, if you can go pre-save or just buy it when it comes out, those first week numbers are huge to the industry. Uh, they really just make or break certain things. We don't know why it's always the first week because you could sell 40,000 the next week and they're just mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, whatever. But it's that first week that really helps put, bands artists into positions of you know you want to see them play the bigger shows the bigger festival slots and do better and and have better production it's those type of numbers that mean the world to us and they really help us so if you can promote the new album july 28th blackout um it's coming out so we're super stoked for it pre-save it buy it tell your friends play it for your dog your cats just get it and blast that thing and enjoy it you know love it as much as we do I'm playing it for my neighbors the whole entire day. They're not going to have a choice to listen to it. But it. Maddie, as we bring this episode to conclusion, I like to close out with three things. First things first. You guys got Blackout coming out on July 28th. You guys are out on the road right now with Motion White in this moment and Fit for a King. You know there's going to be more tours coming out. And like Maddie just said, you're going to want to pre-save it if it's before the album drops. If it's out now, go buy it, support them. I would say I would pre-order it already, but... I already did. So yeah, it's already taken care of. I really so appreciate the, you. The best way you can make sure you get that done, go straight from the podcast. Links and labels for everything from Ashley are going to be down there, including where you can go pre-save it, pre-order it, 
you listen to it, buy it, all that good kind of stuff. Now it's time for number two. Man, I've never guessed in the podcast and joined the podcast. I tend to make a certain promise, a way to say thank you. And I wish to continue to support the band at any point in time and continue to do this as much as possible. Every person I had in the podcast has hit this. Even the time I had Lance on back in early 2021, he hit on this and I still owe him on this. And now I'm going to owe you on this one as well. So it's not an if, it's a when. I can see perform live. Not for the first time, but the next time. My promise to you is this. I'm going to go Liam Neeson on your ass. I'm going to look for you. I'm going to pursue you. I'm going to find you. And first round's okay. on me. Let's go. Hey, I'm down. I am I am definitely more of the the drinker in the band. Everybody's kind of taking a couple sips here and there now, which is cool. It's you know, got a little camaraderie. <laughs> Not that we need to be drinking or anything, but Lance and I have that little pre-show shot, which is cool. It's a little camaraderie thing that we do. But I'm very down post show. Have a drink together. Let's make it happen. I'm very well, down. We'll make it happen. Now it's time for number three. I can uh, not end this by saying goodbye because I would love to have you on again on the podcast in the future. This was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I do have to make good on that promise. And of course, I'm going to see the band live again. I've seen you guys live once this year. I saw you guys four times last year. I'm going to be doing it again as much as possible. So this is not goodbye, my friend. This is, I'll see you later. Absolutely. I'll see you soon. Hello, folks. This is my interview with Maddie, the drummer from From Ash to New. I have to specify because there's Matt, the, the singer, Maddie, the drummer. Got to specify which one of the two. But now it's time for Kevin's final thought. This was one I've been trying to get like four months in the making, trying to get this going. And literally getting to do it right before the album dropped was awesome. And being able to talk to Maddie and hearing what he had to say about, you know, reflecting on how far the band has come, not only from when he began with the band back in like 2016, 2017, but where they've come from since the pandemic hit to now with Blackout coming out, just being able to reflect on the positive, being able to reflect on how far they've come, but also keep that hunger going, knowing what they've always wanted to do and to keep going even when times get tough, how to make sure that, you know, when things do get tough what keeps them going and just seeing how it all comes into play for um from ashes new really being able to connect with the fans create these incredible experiences every time they go out on stage and have this positive impact everywhere they go and it doesn't matter what tour they're on i've seen them play live in front of like i said 250 people maybe back in early 2022 i've saw them play in front of like you know maybe six seven hundred people at bottom lounge in chicago i saw them then play in front of, you know, maybe about the same crowd at the basement of the rave when they headline. Then when they opened for, for Mash, or uh, both for Valentine, I saw them play in front of 3,000. That was even a month after they opened for Shinedown and played in front of tens of thousands of people. And the fact that they're growing at such an incredible rate, you have to make sure that you are, you know, doing everything you can to continue on that. And by building up these positive emotions within people through their music and through the interactions the band has with people is going to be something that takes this band incredibly far, not only in the music they create with the fans, but also within the music scene as well. And I brought up Seven Dust and Papa Roach for this exact same reason, because when you think of those bands and you bring up those bands, they create such a positive environment for everyone that's around them, whether it's the fans, the crew, the other bands, whoever it might be. And put Shine Down in there as well, because... Because they got to see Shine Down do it firsthand. And the fact that they're employing a lot of that and they genuinely believe that and genuinely have that mindset, that is something that is gonna make sure that From Ashes to New is a band that is gonna be around for a long time, positively connecting with fans for a long time. And hopefully by the by the time you know it's all said and done, they're one of the most influential bands of our time. You never know. Very well might happen. I hope it does. So when it comes to Blackout coming out on July 28th, if this is before July 28th, go to the description of the podcast where it says Five Smash is new online. You'll find links to where you can get it, pre-order it, pre-save it, everything. If it is July 28th, 2023, or later when you're watching this, make sure you go and buy it. Make sure you go support the guys, listen to it, stream it, everything. Make sure you go and support from Ash New because this album is going to be awesome. I mean, just listen to Nightmare, with one of the singles off of it. It is fantastic. It's probably my favorite song from him, so I highly recommend it. Also, make sure you're going to, you know, come and subscribe to the Core Progression Podcast. If you're on like Spotify, Podcast, Radio, Amazon, wherever it is, hit the subscribe, follow button. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button right down here as we put out episodes every single Tuesday and Thursday. We're some of the best bands in rock and roll, some of the best up and coming ones as well. On top of that, we post clips throughout the week and a Friday song reaction just for you guys. So please go and do that. Also, our links for our social media down there, Facebook and Instagram are our primary ones. So go and check that out. Also want to thank Phoenix Fitness for supporting this podcast. Remember 20% use code CPP20 at FNX. It's a comp. Thank you, Phoenix Fitness. Thank you, Maddie. I will be seeing you at some point very soon because 
I'm not missing another from Ash. Just a new show. I haven't missed one yet. That's in my area. Well, actually, I missed that Shine Down one because I was in Chicago to see August Burns Red that night. But when they came up for both for my Valentine, ooh, that was a fun time back right before Memorial Day 2023. So, yeah, I'm not missing another one. I got to make good my promise. I also have to make good my promise to Lance as well because I haven't run into him yet. But got to make sure I get first rounds on me. Support from Ashes to New. These guys deserve it. So on that note, that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Card Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin. And you guys know how I end every single one. of the big, healthy, and hearty. See you. Yeah.